What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I'm going to show you everything that I bring to the gig. I've spent the last few weeks subbing with the San Francisco Symphony, and I want to make sure that I just have the right stuff all the time at the gig that I don't have to think about it, and I try to make sure that I'm really consistent with that stuff, because I only have so much headspace, and I need to devote that energy to making good music, playing the bass well, so these little details actually end up being the big details for me. I live in San Francisco, and it can be a little bit cold in the early and late part of the day, so I wear one of these puffer coats, Patagonia. I love this because it keeps me warm. We don't get below freezing here, so this is perfectly adequate, but it also bunches down so I can put it in my bag, which I'll get to in a moment. In the puffer coat, I have this pocket right here. Wallet goes right here. Just have this here, old school. I carry a wallet. This pocket is where I'm going to put my AirPods, my keys, and possibly my chapstick when I'm at the gig. I don't like to have stuff in my pockets. I, I'm a compulsive chapstick user, so I'm always keeping this in my left pocket. But once I actually get to the gig, these go in this pocket right here. My phone either goes in my right pants pocket or it goes in this pocket right here. And because it's 2020, I've got my mask pocket. Hopefully this will not be a mask pocket for long. For the San Francisco Symphony, we're wearing these N95s backstage right now, and then I've got a lighter mask uh, when I'm just like walking out of my place. I pretty much wear the same thing every day, and this is what I wear to rehearsal. People a generation older than me do kind of dress up for rehearsal sometimes for professional orchestras, but people my age and younger, this is pretty common. So I wear either an Under Armour shirt or I actually prefer this Patagonia t-shirt, and I wear these black t-shirts all the time if you ever watch these videos, and it's for a practical reason. It's because I'm like a sweaty mess of a human, and especially when I'm wheeling my bass to work, I don't want to get there and have pit stains, all that sort of stuff. So these workout shirts seem to work really well, and the Patagonia seems to work particularly well. I just wear these kind of Levi's form-fitting sort of jeans, you know, just kind of like slim fit or whatever the heck they're called. Um, they work for me, and again, I wear the same thing every day, so I don't have to think about it. For footwear, I wear these Under Armour shoes and athletic socks, and they work well for the gig, and then I don't have to carry a second set of shoes to go to the gym. Underwear, and I told you this was gonna get detailed, I like these Patagonia boxer briefs. They're really comfortable, and it might seem ridiculous to make sure that your underwear is dialed in, but I find that if I'm not comfortable in my own person, I'm not gonna be comfortable on the gig, then all those little things just add to clutter in your mental space, and I just wanna reserve all of my brain power for playing the gig as well as possible. And so these little things, they really are a big deal to me. I'm a classical player, and so I spend about half of my time going to rehearsal and the other half going to concerts. And so what I bring is a little bit different between the two, especially with my non-bass stuff. When I'm going to rehearsal, I bring this bag. It's by Peak Design, based here in San Francisco. And there's a wonderful YouTuber named Chase Reeves that's done a very in-depth review of this bag. I will link up to his channel so you can check it out. One cool thing about this bag is it's standard hands up on its own. And that might not seem like a big deal, but I never realized how often I need to just put my bag somewhere, not have it flopping around. And it's got this great flip top right here so I can flip it open and I have this quick access pouch right here. What I keep in here, I always wanna have some snacks because I never know when I'm gonna get hungry. So I do kind bars these days. That seems to work well for me. I also carry an anchor power brick right here. I have a smaller one that I use on my daily use and then I have a bigger, more hardcore one when I'm on the road at conferences or something like that. And then a little cleaning cloth for my iPad or iPhone and just the cables, lightning and USB-C and anything I need for devices. And I'm a big fan of just little stuff like this. Use it when you need it, but you don't really see it. You don't really notice it. This is pretty light, so it doesn't take up much uh, space in my bag. doesn't add to a lot of weight. And I'm really trying to keep the weight down. That's important as a bass player. And just every little thing accumulates in terms of space and weight. And before you know it, you're carrying a ton of stuff around and you're hurting your body and that sort of thing. So I'm trying to get the most usefulness in terms of my daily carry and what's in my base case. I keep it as minimal as possible at the same time. I also keep two Chico bags in my top pocket and I'm constantly going to the store and that sort of stuff. I generally wheel my base to Davies Hall for the San Francisco Symphony. And I realize it's weird to walk your base to rehearsal, but I haven't had a car since 20. 18 and at some point I will get a car but just for me personally that is what I do to get to the gig and I know it's a little weird to not have a car as a bass player I actually kind of like the ridiculousness of not having a car as a bass player back when I did have a car I had certain items that I would have in my car at all time 
times. That can be a good strategy or not, depending on where you live. I wouldn't leave anything in my car here in San Francisco. This is a very thievy, car break in sort of town. But if you live in a place with secure parking and the Giga Secure Parking, there are probably a lot of items you'd leave in your car. And if you want me to do a video on what's in my car or what would be in my car, let me know. I can do infinite variations on these videos. I think about this stuff all the time. And like I said, these details really do matter to me in terms of my performance on the base. So it might seem weird to talk so much about my backpack and my underwear, but I find that all those little things contribute to me performing optimally, and that's what I'm trying to do. I carry one of these Yeti water bottles. I find this thing to be great. And I also use this when I'm on the road for conferences and it's just excellent. I usually fill it up at the gym and add some ice. So I have ice water all the time. And again, I never know when I'm gonna get thirsty and I find that this is a little on the heavy side, but I find that it's well worth it just in terms of bringing it around. When it's getting warm in San Francisco, I take this puffer coat and I just pop it into the top here. And this packs down really easily. It's extremely lightweight and I can Fold it there and then I got the puffer coat whenever I need it, put it away when I don't want to see it. Peak Design specializes in camera bags. So this is actually a bag that I use for my camera gear when I'm on the road. But when I'm not on the road, it's just a great daily carry bag. So I go to the gym pretty much every day and I'm usually incorporating it. I'm either going to the gym and then going to rehearsal or I drop off my base and then go to the gym after rehearsal. And I want to make it really hard to not go to the gym. <laughs> Otherwise I won't go to the gym. So I make sure that I have my gym stuff with me. I got this little belt thing here and this just holds my iPhone and my keys and my chapsticks so that I don't have to worry about them falling out of my pockets. Again, very small, doesn't take up much room and I can just put it around my waist like this when I'm at the gym. I also have my little toiletry bag for the gym, razor and that kind of stuff. And then my gym clothes just right down there. So pretty lightweight, not a big deal. I do sometimes carry the iPad. I use the iPad Pro with this Logitech case. This thing is a little bit on the heavy side and I notice it when it's on my back. So unless I know I'm going to have some time to work on my iPad, I don't bring it. But I find that about half the time I got this in my bag. This is also what I bring on the road in terms of computing gear. And if you want a what do I bring when I'm on the road video, I'm gonna think endlessly about this sort of stuff so I could do a video about that. Just let me know in the comments. And when I am on the road, I bring this and this was what I'll read off of for sheet music. And then I'll bring this foot pedal. This is an air turn. It's kind of an older generation of foot pedal. There are probably better ones out there these days, but still works great for me. Last thing about this bag before I dive into the base, these straps. These are just the little details that I really like. They have magnets, so they they stay kind of nice and tidy right there on the back when you don't need them. The material here I find to be pretty comfortable. It kind of gets it off your back so you don't get so sweaty with the backpack. This backpack's so much lighter when I don't have the iPad in, by the way. And then it, this bag also has this strap right here so that you can get it a little bit... Um, more balanced on your body. And I find that this is extremely comfortable. Get to the gig, I have the space to carry my stuff and I always want some kind of bag with me to put my tchotchkes in, you know, put my iPhone in and all that kind of thing. When I get to the gig, by the way, I am a firm believer of phone off. <laughs> so I go and I slide to power off and I know you can put it on airplane mode or that sort of thing, but I just find that the security of doing that is really helpful. I have never had my phone that I'm aware of go off during a gig and I have been shutting the phone off for ever since I had a phone so like 20 years at this point. Let's check out what's in the actual case and like with my bag I'm trying to have everything I'm going to likely need but nothing more as minimalist as I can possibly be while still having what I need for the gig. I don't want this thing to be any heavier than it needs to be. It's heavy enough and lifting it up and in and out of the car if you're driving or up and down curbs and in and out of elevators any added weight and bulk it really takes a toll on your body and you add that up over the days, weeks, months, and years, and you're gonna notice it. So this is the Meridian Deluxe case. Sadly, these are no longer being made. I hear a lot of good things about Messina cases, and uh, full disclosure, I work for Eastman Music Company. We're working on a new base case. Once that comes along, I'll let you know. Uh, currently, I think Messina is probably what I'd send people to. Hopefully we can make a case good enough that I can send you to that, but we'll, we'll see. 
working on it. I've done an entire video on base cases and I will link up to that in the description below also if you wanna nerd out on that. We'll start down here. This is my base wheel. I know some people don't use base wheels. I don't know how people get around without a base wheel. I've been using one of these ever since I started playing bass or pretty much since I started. I love it. This is the Gaines base wheel from Wisconsin. I am not sure if these are being made anymore. I'll look it up and I will link to this or something, whatever's on the market. One thing that I think is important for base wheels is having a bracket on either side. I've had base wheels that only have a bracket on one side. All of them have bent over time and just kind of ruins the wheel. And part of that's just loading up your case. And even if you try to keep it light like I do, inevitably you're gonna have a garment bag someday and you're gonna drape it over the base or this or that. And so the single bracket always seems to fail on me. So I just look for a wheel that has a bracket like this. And this thing has gone through the snow in Chicago. It's gone probably hundreds of miles at this point since I walked to the symphony. I think I put, I put five miles at least a week on this when I'm subbing with the symphony. We got three pockets in the back of this Meridian case and this is for the end pin. I have this right here. I just use this Getz style end pen. It's great because it has the stopper right here and that works if you're not allowed to take the top off and drill into the floor. At the symphony, we put these directly into the stage, which is great. I think it helps the sound. I don't know if that's scientifically correct, but it seems to work well and it keeps the bass really secure. This pocket right here is where I would keep sheet music. If I'm picking up practice parts from the symphony, that would go right in there. I try to not carry anything that I don't need. I don't wanna weigh it down. So this is empty right now because I'm home. This pocket right here, I call my iPad pocket. So if I am using my iPad for a gig, which I commonly do these days, that's where the iPad goes and the foot pedal right now. I also keep an extra set of strings right here. The odds of breaking a bass string are very low, but they don't take up that much space. They don't take up that much weight. And I think just for the sake of security or again, being a good colleague, let's say something weird does happen. Someone has a string that fails. I do have a set of strings here. So just in case I need it, I got it. I also have one extra layer right here. This is just an Under Armour long sleeve shirt. Generally, I am fine in a short sleeve t-shirt like this in the hall when I'm rehearsing, but just in case for rehearsal, if I do need an extra layer, I've got this right here. And this just stays in my base case at the gig. Okay, here's the top of the base case. And in this pocket, I carry a yoga block. The reason I carry that is because at the symphony I sit they have stools so I'm not carrying a stool but I do like to get my foot a bit off the ground and so this is very lightweight and I can just put it on the ground and I have it and the symphony does have this sort of thing but sometimes we're on the other other side of the stage or it's just inconvenient I just want to have this because I find that it helps me feel more grounded and it's kind of saving wear and tear on my body. And again, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep things as smooth and painless as possible so that I can be in this game for the long term. I also carry an extra thing of rosin, you never know, and just a couple snack packs also in my base case. In this little pocket, I don't carry that much because this is the handle I like to use. This is too built out. It's kind of hard to carry the base, but I carry deodorant. Why? Because I can be a sweaty mess and having B.O. on the gig, Probably not a good idea. I have, have I ever actually had to use this? I don't think so, but just the security, and again, it's so small. Uh, I find it helpful to have, if only for my, my mental health. And in here, I have my bow case. This is kind of my staging area for a whole bunch of things that I actually use at the gig. So let's open this up and take a look at what's inside. Let's open up this bow case and this I bought from Lemur Music. I don't think it's made anymore, but I do like having a double bow case. I find that really helpful. I have heard of people breaking their main bow. That's probably the best reason for carrying a second bow. Or if you're a classical player like me and all of a sudden you have to do coleño, which is when you take and you hit the, the strings, having a carbon fiber second bow can be great for that. And again, being a good colleague, you never know when someone needs a bow in a pinch. And if you're carrying a bow case, having one that has room for two is not that much of a big deal to me. So for all those reasons, I feel that it's really helpful to carry a double bow case. In this double bow case, we got my main bow. This is a Baron Doling. If you've watched any of these other videos, that's what I'm playing on 90% of the time. This is a finale bow that I got from the String Emporium. A good second bow for sure. I have a hair tie because of this. My main rosin, which is leather 
word bespoke. I believe this is the 50% that I'm using right now. For pencil, I just carry one of these little golf pencils and it's got an eraser. They usually had these backstage at professional orchestras, so I just, whenever one wears out, I get it. I'm always forgetting to sharpen it. Uh, I need to sharpen it, so maybe I will while I'm filming this. This is a recent addition to my kit. I actually just picked this up this week. Uh, it's a tuner by Diderio. I think it's called the Equinox Tuner, and it has a spot where you can charge it via USB. They have one that uses a watch battery style, but I like the USB rechargeable, so I don't have to worry about batteries. And it works great. I use my phone a lot of the time, but when you're using your phone at a rehearsal, you know, if it's noisy, it's not gonna pick up your bass that great. You have to put your phone on the bridge and have it balance, and that can be kind of a pain in the neck. And also, I don't like to have my phone on at rehearsal or concert, so it's just nice to turn my phone off, put it backstage, and then I just have this and I bring it out with me and it works great. At some point, I'm going to do a video on tuning the bass. I may have already done that by the time this comes out, if so, I'll link up to it. But uh, there are many different ways to do it. But I've found that in professional orchestras, most people are using a chromatic tuner to get their open strings in tune. And again, I am subbing in professional orchestras and I want to fit in. So while I can tune my bass just using my ears, I find that this is helpful and I just know that I'm starting at the same playing ground as everyone else. The last part of my kit is on my bass itself. I have not a bunch of stuff, but a few things. I have my mute right here and I like these rubber tort style mutes. There are many different kinds of mutes, but this one seems to work well because you can just put it here and I don't have to worry about it. If it's a piece that doesn't use a mute, I can take it off if I don't. Sometimes these rattle a little bit, but every time I try to use one that's like ebony and you put on right here, I end up whacking it in the slow movement, so I have to be careful. And then I have a rag right here and I'm constantly using this to wipe down the strings, wipe down the fingerboard. Whenever I think about it, I throw it in the wash, uh, which is not as often as I probably should, but that's a really helpful part of the kit as well. The last thing, but an important thing for me for the kit are earplugs right here and I don't use earplugs a whole lot but when you need them it's nice to have them so I make sure that I just you know I'll use them and then I'll lose them and then again backstage professional orchestras we always have those this doesn't get in the way at all. So if you're at that St. Patrick's gig and you all of a sudden see the snare drum and bagpipe army approaching, and that has happened to me, you got earplugs and you can save your hearing. That's what I carry. I try to keep it as light as possible. I've tried to dial it in over the years. And so this is it. This keeps me focused. I don't have to think about what I need and repack and all that kind of stuff. I can save that energy for the gig and I find that super helpful. If you want to see more videos like this, check out. We've got linked up and I'll see you in the next one.